have the good fortune to sit and talk to Pyle Kadakia, who one of the things she does is she is founder of ClassPass. So we are going to um, start and talk about something that I found really interesting that you and I talked about, which is how did you come up with the idea for ClassPass? What was going on in your life at the time that you thought this is a good idea? Um, so many things, and I always talk about this one time when I was on the internet and I was looking for a ballet class, but to be honest, it was much more than that, and that's sort of really what I want to talk about today. So when I was three years old, I found something I loved to do in my life. I found that I loved to dance, and it was something that I fought to keep in my life. Uh, my parents came from India, and they wanted me to obviously get great education, get a degree, and I went along with that path. But while I was doing that, I realized I couldn't give up on something I loved and I had to find time for it. And it's something that we all struggle with as we get older, have our careers. Committing and to our passions. Totally. And how do you find time for it? How do you prioritize it? And I fought really hard mm. to keep it in my life. And um, were, were, your, were your parents resistant to that? Absolutely. Um, and it was something that over time, I kept talking to them about why I loved it. I would invite them to my shows and they would see that people realized how amazing and talented we were as a company. Um, and they ended up- And maybe you were too, <laughs> you had some of that talent. Yeah, and you know, my favorite was my dad always wanted me to go to business school and one day he came to my show and the next day he sent me arts programs to Columbia. <laughs> All right, that was a message. <laughs> exactly. So, so from your desire to, to stay connected to your passion, how did the concept for, for ClassPass come to be? Right, so one day I was sitting at my desk and I was looking for a ballet class, something pretty you know, simple. Uh, this was six years ago, and I really had this epiphany that the information that was on the internet was just so hard to find out, how do I get to this class? How do I you know, say yes to this experience? What's the right closest venue to me? And in that experience, I realized how many other people struggle with finding and staying connected to their passions in their life, whether it's photography, fitness, other different types of things that make us feel alive. And I really felt that I was responsible for solving that for the world. Mm -hmm. And I quit my job and... What was your job at the time? So I was working at Warner Music Group doing digital strategy. And one of my favorite things that a friend told me at the time was, Pile quit without a plan B. So obviously a very quit hard thing to do. Quit without a plan B. Um, because most of the times you quit and you're like, okay, well, I still need to make sure I'm paying my bills or whatever it might be. But I think at that time, I knew I would be successful in anything I did. My mom was the one who told me to quit, which was actually clearly a big part of mm. the journey I had with my parents. Um, but you must have had the confidence to know you could quit, which yes, is a big thing. I just, I believed in myself. And I think that really is the part I always tell everyone to keep working on is make sure any, any confidence that you need, that you are drawing that from the people around you, from the things that you are doing. If you're not getting that from your work, figure out where to get it from, because that's what's gonna help you move forward and make these decisions which are instrumental to do in your life. And ultimately, failure doesn't mean that you quit. Absolutely Failure not. means that you get up and you go again. And some of the most successful people that I've interviewed in, in my career have been people who have embraced their failure. And some people say that they won't, they won't work with someone that hasn't failed a few times. They won't work with a, a company it's that has Resilience, hasn't. right? Yeah. I always say the number one quality I think a lot of people look for in entrepreneurs is that resilient nature. I was just having a conversation backstage and I was saying the first investor I talked to, he literally was like, you have no idea what you're doing. And I remember that conversation five years ago. Did he invest in you? So two years later, okay. <laughs> um, I remember calling him and he was like, wow, you figured this out. And I'm like, I was never going to stop. And people always invest in lines, not dots. It's not about that mm. one moment when something happened. We could talk a little bit about how so class pass pivoted. It wasn't about my first product it was about my 50th, and that's what worked, but it was the fact that I went from one to 50, and I got there, and I ended up figuring it out. And one of the things we also talked about, which, which I love about you, is that you're not what someone would consider a conventional CEO. Um, when people think of CEOs of companies, and I think it's changing a lot more, they think of someone who you know, has a certain background and a certain, looks a certain way, and you defy um, all of those stereotypes. So how, you, you're more of a creative CEO. Absolutely, I'm, I'm an artist. Uh, my team actually calls me a life designer. The, That's the vision, how you dreamed up the idea of exactly. ClassPass. The vision of ClassPass is really big. Our, our vision statement is every life fully lived. Just going back to everything we've been talking about here today, it's about how do we connect people to these experiences and these amazing things in their life that 
are hard to find, right? Everyone wants to help. Everyone wants to do stuff. They just don't know where to go. And we want to use technology to help bridge that gap so people can do that. And how has that been for you, pivoting and seeing um, you know, how people have responded to what you're doing and then acknowledging, I know we've spent a lot of time and effort over here, but that's not what people are connecting to. Let's move over here. Yeah, so Fluidity. my first product, um, you know, we, we got into this amazing incubator in New York City. We had everyone watching us. We were all over the press. And I spent a year and a half building a directory for classes. And we launched it and there were crickets, literally. No one booked classes. So we spent a year and a half building a product. I had raised a million dollars at that point. A lot of people were like, of course I book classes through your engine, and they didn't. So one thing mm -hmm. I always say is make sure when you're building something, you know that your customers want it. It's very hard to get feedback until you put an MVP out in the market. And you know, it was something that it was hard when I had to go tell my team this isn't, we're going to have to move and shift to another way. But what, what are How your options? How did you change it? So I think, you know, this was my first moment as, I think it was like a very hard decision as a founder. I mean, what are you going to do? You have capital in the bank. You're not going to shut down your company. And more importantly, I still had a very big vision. I was still mush right. moving towards. And so to me, I just figured out it wasn't failure. It was a data point to me that this was not going to work. So what's another way it was going to work? And we literally... A day later after we knew that it wasn't going to work, started working on sort of a pass-based model, which obviously has now evolved into ClassPass, but um, that was sort of the first moment where I just was like, you got to just keep moving, you know? That's the number one thing, don't get stuck. Um, I always like to sort of indulge in those moments where I feel like I've failed a little bit, because the quicker That's I get inertia, there... That's inertia, isn't it? Yeah, the quicker you get there, the, the better I'm just going to, you know, get up tomorrow and say, I'm not going to deal with this. And how did you find um, fundraising as a female founder? Because we all know how underfunded female founded startups are. You know, I always, you know, I've always kind of felt like an underdog just because of my height, you know, just who I am. But at the end of the day, it's about, it's about when you have a vision and you have an idea and you work hard towards it. I always like to say hard work really conquers all and results do. And if you really focus on that, I try and let all the other noise kind of go away and disappear. I don't, I don't want to be invested in because I'm a female either, right. right? I want to be invested in because I've built something amazing. Well, you certainly have. Thank you. When I, when I uh, mention your name to people, they're like, yeah, she's a unicorn. <laughs> this is a unicorn. <laughs> um, so who were some of your mentors? When you, were, when you were coming up? I love, you know, people are everything. I think through these hard moments, it was the people I called um, that helped push me through. There were, there were some early entrepreneurs, people like Cyrus who built ZocDoc, um, Anjula Acharya Bath, who uh, she's now a VC and also is Priyanka Chopra's manager. She's somebody who actually the first day I thought of this idea, I remember I went to speak with her and I was almost going to take a job at Spotify. And she was like, I would never invest in you if you had another job. And that was like light bulbs for me. I was like, that's it. I'm focusing on this one thing and dedicating my life to this purpose. And just shows the importance of when you have an idea, you just need one person to believe in you and Absolutely. remind you in those moments where you think, this is impossible, I don't know that this can work, I, this is, everyone's telling me this is crazy. Keep those people really close. And to be honest, I think I've also done a good job of the people who I think are not pushing me forward, of figuring out ways to not keep them in my life. And are you that for other people? Absolutely, I think inspiration and being someone who creates action and moves forward hopefully helps other people unleash who they are in their life. And to be honest, that's what ClassPass stands for. It's, it's about go and do something. Even when you feel weak, even when you feel like you can't, go and challenge yourself. Take that step and it's easy and you always get through it. Well, I am really excited to see how ClassPass evolves and grows and I'm so pleased I got to meet you and thank you for your time today. Thank you. Thanks, guys.